these old things pretty much unwanted. It's estimated around 1.5 million old sets will end up at the dump each year. About the same number of computer monitors are chucked into landfill as well. Not if these guys have anything to do with it though. This is a TV and computer monitor recycling plant where they turn our old sets into materials we can use again. They're really busy right now getting through all these TVs that need to be recycled. So I decided to test them out. Right, Michelle, I've brought my TV. Um, what's going to happen to it now? Terrific. Well, what we will do with it now is we will pull it all apart, separate all the materials and components, and then we can send those to specialised recyclers so that it can be recycled. TVs come here from all over Australia. That's because it's the only place in the country that has the equipment needed to recycle the glass in your old set. It's really valuable because it contains all the right chemicals and minerals needed to produce a great picture. Their first job is to rip them apart and separate all the plastic from the wiring, computer chips and metals. From there, they're left with the tube, which is cut apart, cleaned and separated. That's then shipped to Malaysia, ready to go straight back into new TVs. But the glass isn't the only part of the TVs and computer monitors that can be used again. Some plastic, the circuit board, the copper yoke, PVC and some copper cord. The circuit boards also contain gold and silver. But before you get any ideas about trashing your TV for gold, you'd only get the tiniest amount from each set. Because electrical equipment needs to be updated and replaced often, most of it ends up here, taking up heaps of space and stopping the materials they're made from from being used again. To stop that, a national recycling program will be set up for all TVs and computer waste. Because the only place we should see heaps of TVs is here. Great idea. Now you might remember last year when a huge dust storm blanketed a large part of Australia. It was definitely no ordinary storm. It put people in hospital and caused chaos in lots of places. Alfie just happened to be in the middle of it, so he decided to find out exactly why it happened. Some people said they woke up feeling like they were on Mars. They were in the middle of an eerie cloud of dust that turned day into night. One of the first towns hit was Broken Hill and an ABC reporter was in the middle of it. Oh my gosh. Everything was bright orange, which normally happens in a dust storm. We did get a call from one of our listeners up at LD Station who said that they were in a blackout. Within two minutes, we walked outside a massive cloud of black dust has rolled over the whole of Broken Hill and just plunged us into absolute darkness. The dust storm began just west of there in the red centre. As it moved eastwards, it grew and grew, eventually expanding to an enormous cloud 400 kilometres wide and 2,000 kilometres long. Some of the dust even made it all the way to New Zealand. Meteorologists say it was caused by a cold front of cool air. That pushed the warm air forward. And because warm air rises, it lifted the dust off the ground and into the atmosphere. It's estimated that it shifted more than 5 million tonnes of soil. Well, that might all be a bit scary, but dust storms aren't all that new in Australia. In fact, they're pretty common. There's even a special centre set up just to study dust. Dust Watch studies how dust is spread across the country. They found that the air pollution during Sydney's dust storm broke records, reaching 1,500 times the amount you'd expect on an ordinary day. Some people, such as young children, the elderly and asthmatics, were told to stay indoors.